Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. It's that time of the year, egg production season, especially in the colubrid room, which means I'm getting hundreds and even thousands of eggs per day. I'm gonna walk you through what it's like to live my day during the egg production season. You're watching Snake Bites. We're a couple weeks into the colubrid egg laying season and we already have over 500 clutches of eggs and it's really heating up now. Every day we're getting several hundred eggs. We're really in the heat of it and it's gonna last for another two to three weeks and then there's a little break and we rebreed them and hopefully get second clutches. But I wanna give you a view of what I'm looking at every day. So that was a lot of eggs so far and we did it pretty quick. So let me slow it down a little bit and show you what the process is. First, you gotta find a clutch of eggs, of course. This blizzard corn, I know just laid a clutch of eggs and sure enough, there they are in the middle. First thing you wanna do is make sure to get the snake out without having her tumble those eggs because you gotta remember, right, that that blood vessel gets adhered to the top and there's an air bubble in there and if you roll the egg with reptile eggs, they drown. So you don't wanna kill the babies. So it's important not to have the eggs all messed up there. Once I pull her out, get the egg box out, of course, shut her back up. Now I already have the vermiculite boxes set up. This is just basic vermiculite and water. And what you wanna have is the consistency where when you squeeze it, it sticks together, but no water actually comes out. If the water comes out, it means it's too wet and you could kill your eggs. If you squeeze it and it doesn't clump together, it's not wet enough. There's actually a ratio that's one to one weight to volume ratio, or you can even go with the product hatch right. It works really well and we use it a lot here too. What you wanna do is then just take the eggs out of the box and be very careful not to turn them. And I just divot them right into the vermiculite, just like that. Nothing really special at all. I usually like to have them about a halfway covered in vermiculite. That's gonna keep the humidity up and keep the eggs nice and plump so that they have everything they need. After I set these eggs up, I just wanna make sure to count them. In this clutch, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten eggs. This was a blizzard corn to a blizzard corn. And again, record keeping is super important. So I'm gonna mark down 10 eggs. I know this female is in aisle M and she's the box number 10. So I'm gonna mark her M10 and I know she was bred to a male blizzard. So I just make all those notes in here. I make the exact same clutch number and notes on my egg box. I close them back up and they're on the shelf for incubation. All right guys, it's Cal's question of the week. Now all these superhero movies have been coming out, X-Men, Thor, it's got me thinking about real life superheroes and real life villains. George, who do you have in mind? Well, the person I do like is Judge Judy, which is a gangster, which is hilarious. The person I don't like is Kanye West, which is a douchebag. Wow. My real life superhero would be Don Cherry, because every single thing he says is absolutely true. And my villain would be Oprah. Text your video comment below, and let me know what you guys think. You might ask, that's a whole lot of eggs. You must have a monster incubator, right? Well, with colubrids, they're not like pythons that need to be really specific temperatures, like 88 or 89 degrees, or the eggs will die. With colubrids, they'll actually vary up to eight or 10 degrees even. You wanna keep them in the 76 to 84 degrees range. The perfect temperature is really 82. It just so happens that we keep this colubrid room at 82 degrees. So as you can see, I just keep the colubrid eggs right up on the shelf. So these guys are gonna go up here and I check them every day or every other day to recirculate the air because you gotta remember, snake eggs breathe just like baby snakes. If you don't recirculate that air, they will die. It's gonna take about 60 days for most cloopers to hatch. So all these eggs are gonna be little babies within a couple months. One of the things I can't stress enough is that it's so important to have embryo side up when it comes to reptile eggs. What happens is the embryo is surrounded by an air bubble and it attaches to the top of the egg. Most people think this happens from anywhere from an hour to 12 hours after it's laid. So if you find a clutch of eggs right away, just keep it the exact same. Do not roll it over. Some people even mark a little X so that they know the top side up. 
Because what happens is if you roll that egg, the bubble gets surrounded by liquid and it'll actually drown the embryo and you'll kill your snake egg. Now, you might ask, what if I find a clutch of egg and the female's rolling them all over the place or you're not sure what side is up? You can actually candle. You just take a flashlight, a really good high beam flashlight like this, and you can actually see the embryo and the network of veins right there. That needs to be on the very top side and as long as you keep it on the top side, your egg's gonna hatch. Now a concern I hear from time to time is the bother the mother that I take the eggs away. Well when it comes to colubrids, they actually just find a really good spot to lay their eggs and within a day or so, they're off. They're gonna go out and try to find food, they're gonna rebreed, they're gonna do whatever they're gonna do and they're gonna leave those eggs to hatch on their own. With some pythons, they do what's called maternal incubation where they'll wrap around the eggs and actually stick with them the entire time of incubation. But that's not the case with colubrids. As a matter of fact, the quicker I can get them away from the egg, the quicker I can feed them and get ready to breed the next time. These are certainly the longest days of the year for me and a ton of work with all these eggs getting laid and so many more on their way. But for a reptile breeder, this is what we live for because we know within a couple months we're going to be hatching out some really cool babies. So here's the deal. I have a couple coming to visit me. Robert's birthday was yesterday. Carissa set up a surprise for him to come up, but little did she know that Robert called me and they've been together for 10 years and he's gonna propose to her today. And uh, we're gonna set up something pretty cool, a proposal Snake Bites TV style. All right, I'll get rolling. You're rolling? I'm rolling. Behind the scenes, cool. All right, and whenever you're ready, Kel. All right guys, it's Kel's Question of the Week. Now life has those memorable moments. Those are the ones that are just completely unforgettable. Robert, do you have any of those that spring to mind? You know, let me see if I can think of something. Oh, what? I got something, all right. You know, these last 10 years have been fantastic, and I was wondering if you would be my wife for the rest of my life. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys are all in, oh my God. <laughs> wow. Yes. God. I hate you all. <laughs> Love you. Me too. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>For this week's Comment of the Week, Kel asked you to ask us questions, and trust me, you guys came up with some doozies. Let's take a look at a few of them. So our first question from Twitter came from Wobbly Wacko 101 It's for you, George. Why are you so f***ing awesome? Because I am a f***ing gangster, <laughs> and that's about it. And this is from uh, Sick701OK. Okay. This one's for me, and it's, uh, have you ever been bitten by Satan? As a matter of fact, me and George just had a run-in with Satan about, what, about four weeks ago, where he got bit twice and I got bit twice. I got bit once right here and once in the side. George, what'd you get? In the hand and in the leg. Yeah, and Chewy, you helped us out a lot on that one, didn't you? Yeah, yeah didn't then, then, came, then came the wambulance. Yeah. <laughs> Chewy, this one's for you. This is from CB Drummer 19 Oh, yeah. How many girls have you made out with? One. And he married her. One. And I married her. <laughs> He's made 22 one. years ago. Yeah. 22 yeah. years, one girl. That's it. Yeah. He's a one woman man. He's wow. I'm faithful. So, yes. Kel, Rouska. Yes. Did you ever play hockey yourself, and what's the most goals you've scored in one game? Yes, I have played hockey on a bunch of different teams. I'm actually a goaltender, though, so I stopped goals. The most saves I ever had was 55. That was probably I, for the Grizzlies, right? Probably because the defense was, the defense was great. I have played out before. Those goals I had playing out was four, but usually I'm, I'm in net stopping them. So. Thanks for all the questions. Trust me, we're really keeping an eye on everything you do. Make sure to comment on YouTube or hit me up on Twitter at SnakeBitesTV. I'll make sure to reply to you, and we might even do another show just like this. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and had a chance to take a look at my life during the crazy egg-laying season. And how about someone actually proposing on Snake Bites TV? How cool is that? It was just an honor for us to be involved. Over on my Twitter account, at Snake Bites TV, I asked you what snake you wanted to see during the show, and John NJ1 said a champagne. So there you go. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.